Hi, I'm Julianne Cost. Let's take a moment to see how Adobe Camera Raw's new masking tools can automatically select different regions in landscape photographs. Here we can see examples of the mask overlay that Camera Raw created over the seven different categories, including sky, mountains, water, architecture, vegetation, natural ground, and artificial ground. Now let's walk through some examples. To save time, I've already made my global edits, so I'll select the mask icon and then choose Landscape. Camera Raw has identified the mountain, vegetation, and water in the image. We can choose to make individual masks from the regions or disable this option to combine multiple masks. In this example, I'll create three separate masks. I'll start by choosing the water mask. Camera Raw automatically displays a red overlay representing the area that will be adjusted. Here I'll move the color temperature towards blue, and as soon as I start making the adjustment, the red overlay is hidden so that we can see the results in the image. Then I'll move to the Effects section and increase the clarity. To see the overlay again, we can enable the option or tap the Y key. If we need to make adjustments to the AI-generated mask component, we can add a second component. In this example, I want to remove the adjustment from this area in the dark sand. I'll choose Subtract, select the Brush tool, and then Paint to remove the unwanted area from the mask. All right, let's toggle off the overlay, but before we move on, if you're new to masking, when we position the cursor over the thumbnail next to the water mask component, we can see the original AI water mask. Positioning the cursor over the brush component displays the area that we subtracted, and positioning the cursor over the water mask displays the resulting mask created from all of the components. Next, let's select the vegetation mask. To change the look and feel of the image from spring to fall, I'll increase the temperature as well as the tint, and then I'll decrease the saturation. With this mask, I see a tiny bit of a plant that wasn't selected, so I'll click Add, choose the brush, and paint over this area so that the adjustments are also made within it. Then I don't want to apply the adjustment at the base of the rock in the foreground, so I'll choose Subtract, choose the brush, and paint to remove the adjustment from the area. So although we might have to make slight adjustments to the mask, landscape masking can save a significant amount of time. Next, let's select the mountain mask, which in this image selected all of the rock. I'll decrease the exposure slightly and then darken the shadows. When I position my cursor over the thumbnail for the component, we can see that it missed a small area at the top of the rock, so I'll choose Add, select the brush again, and paint in the area so that the adjustment is also applied to the top of the rock. To toggle the visibility of the masking adjustments, I'll click and hold the eye icon, so here's without the adjustments, and then with the adjustments. In this next image, I've already created my global adjustments, so in the masking tool, I'll choose Landscape. This time, Camera Raw detected four regions, the sky, architecture, vegetation, and natural ground. I'll create four individual masks and start by selecting the natural ground mask. Then I'll decrease the exposure slightly, and I can see that it's missing a little bit of grass in this area, so I'll choose Add, select the brush, and then Paint to add this top area in. Next, let's move to the vegetation mask. This mask includes not only the shrubs and trees around the building, but also the grass in the foreground because it's all vegetation. It's not uncommon that the contents of several landscape masks will overlap, but as we saw in the image before, we can refine those masks using any of the other masking tools to achieve the precise masks that we want. I'll decrease the contrast and reduce the highlights, as well as increase the blacks. But we can see that as I make changes, the grass is also being adjusted. To limit the adjustments to the vegetation around the building and not adjust the grass, 
In this image, I can choose subtract, but instead of using the brush, I'll select landscape and then select natural ground. Now when I adjust the tint, the foreground grass isn't changing because I subtracted it using that natural ground mask. Let's look at the components again. Here's the original AI mask of the vegetation. This is the natural ground component that was subtracted. And here's the resulting mask based on the components. Next, let's move to the architecture mask. Here I want to decrease the highlights as well as the whites. Then under effects, I'll increase the texture. To toggle the visibility of a single mask, I'll use the eye icon. And I can see that it's adjusting a few areas that I don't want. So I'll choose subtract, select the brush, and then paint over this area. I'll get a smaller brush by using the left bracket key and then paint over this area as well. All right, let's zoom out and select the sky mask. In effects, I'll increase the clarity slightly and also increase the dehaze amount. In the details segment, I'll increase the noise reduction to counterbalance any grain that was amplified in the sky by denoise. Then in the color panel, I'll desaturate the colors slightly. Now in order to create an off-center vignette, I'll add one more mask to this image. I'll click the plus and choose radial gradient and then drag out the mask in the image area. By default, the inside will be adjusted. So I'll click the invert icon so that I can apply the effect outside of the ellipse. Then I'll decrease the exposure and drag the pin in order to reposition it so that it's over the building. Then let's use the eye icon on the mask to take a quick look without the masking adjustments and then with the adjustments applied. Okay, before we wrap up, I've made an adaptive preset that will apply all seven of the landscape masks to an image with a single click. You can download this preset from my blog by clicking on the link in the description below and downloading the select landscape zip file. Then click on the preset icon, then click the try dot menu and select import profiles and presets. Select the zip file and choose import. Select your image and then click on the preset to apply it. To view the masks, we'll need to click the masking icon. The adaptive preset adds an AI mask for each landscape category based on the content of the image. It doesn't make any adjustments so that you can then make your own. If the image doesn't contain that category, for example, this image doesn't contain any architecture, the mask will display an explanation mark on the thumbnail. You can use the try dot menu to delete the empty mask or choose to delete all empty masks to delete them all at once. I'm Julianne Cost. Thanks for watching.